That would be helpful if we want to broadcast. We'll have the mic turned on. For those of you watching, we did have two other videos. We had a special from Dave, who is still here, and he could probably do the special. But uh, we also had an update from our missionaries that uh, are, they're not playing. We don't know why. Actually, I think I know because I put a bunch of uh, videos in the background, and if I do five, things can mess up. I got to learn. Anyway, um, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and everyone who has a mother. And um, this is the second Mother's Day when we can't celebrate together. And my mom has had two birthdays where she couldn't celebrate together. And I got she doesn't like it. She, she's decided she doesn't like it. The, um, we're, we're in this new normal for longer than, maybe not that what we expected, but longer than most of us want to tolerate. And I think we've all had times when hope, we've experienced that hope deferred makes the heart sick. And I had an, a t completely different series, the series on discernment that I was planning on, on preaching, but I, I tabled that for another time with the news that came out from the province because I really do, we need, need I, think, I think we need to know how, how to navigate the new normal. Because I don't know about you, but I know for myself, I have had things I've just excused, like I've put off. I've put off until another time. And I don't know if that's, well, I know for a fact that's not God, what God wants us to do. I do believe that we need to obey God in new and different ways. Like still obey God, but, but do that in ways that we might not have thought of. We need creativity at this time. Um, but first off, we need to acknowledge, like when, when we need to know how to hope. Keep hoping when the finish line keeps moving. The problem that we have is that we live in a province where the finish line for COVID-19 hasn't even been established yet. We don't know when they're going to say, okay, we can go out. And it doesn't matter if you think the government was slow in doing the right thing and this is the right thing they should be doing now. It doesn't matter if you think that uh, yes, we need to protect the most vulnerable, but haven't the most vulnerable had the chance to get the shot? And if they want to protect the system, why have they only gutted the system the time that they've been in power? I don't think they have a moral responsibility. They don't have a moral leg to stand on to say that they're protecting anything that they're gutting. Um, it doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you're on. All of us need to endure. All of us need to press on. All of us need to figure out a way to get through this time and this season that we don't know when it's going to end. And does it really matter? Well, it matters because not only when this situation is just one small part. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to laugh because... Karen is doing the broadcast, and she says sometimes when she zooms up, it's like, you know, she just got, she, let, she got off my head for a while there, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> I think by the time we get this done, I'm going to have my computer up here, and we're going to be interacting with people, because I already know that you're on Facebook, and you're doing a great job, and you're interacting, and you're loving on each other. That's great. And we can bring in all the comments from everywhere else. And honestly, it just scares me to do that because I'm so easily distracted and I just get onto the comments and I got like pages to go through here. But um, uh, what was my point? I don't know. Oh, we're all going to have times in our life when whether it's our health, whether it's our relationships, whether it's our finances, we're all going to feel like that finish line keeps getting pushed off. That answer really wasn't the answer. That 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 milestone really didn't matter as much as we were hoping it would. And right now, myself, like that's my life, okay? 
a year ago, I was doing great. I had lost 75 pounds. I was walking 10,000 steps every day. I was feeling good. It was awesome. And I was on a walk on flat ground, and I started getting a little bit dizzy and chest pains, and I took a shot of nitro. Not a big deal. It happened before. When I'd go up mountains or go up a hill, and it would happen, I'd take a shot of nitro. Nitro kind of expands all the cells in your body, so you have a bad headache for the rest of the day. Next day, everything's good. That's what I totally expected. I took a couple, I had to take a couple shots of nitro and walk really slowly home because I was, you know, 10,000 steps away. And um, <laughs> I got home and I never got better. I, I never got back to where that was. And, you know, thinking it was the heart, we had to go up, chase that. Is it the heart? The heart's fine. Great. What's next? What's going on? And in the last year, I've had 12 consults with my MD. I've had three meetings with two cardiologists. I fired the first one. I've had two stress tests, two echocardiograms, and several other tests. Everything's good. I had an upper gastro gastrointestinal. They, they checked this pipe going up and down. Everything's good there. I have only had one visit to the ER, which is better than the last few years. But I also, it's because I've got an EC, a one-point ECG on here, and I've got this other six-point ECG, so I can take my own ECGs. And if it's not a problem, I'm not going in. Um, and I take my own blood pressure and uh, oxygen levels and all that stuff. So um, I went, when I went to get glasses, I had to go to the, to the eye doctor. The eye doctor found something in my eye, and he wants me to come back in six months because if it he doesn't know if I've had it my whole life or if it's something that's growing going to grow in six months and if it grows in six months he's got an ophthalmologist for me to see um I I've gone to the respiratory therapist and did a test for sleep apnea it wasn't the problem my hip has slipped out a couple of times and I've got this sur I had surgery a number of years ago like 2004 and the scar tissue from the surgery uh sits on the nerve that runs down my leg and so a couple of times, I, I, I've got no feeling in my leg. That's what was happening last week. And um, my physiotherapist takes care of that. She's really good. Uh, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, that's what was happening. My, my pain, I was in pain. I was standing up all the time. And I got the report from the biopsy that this is actually squamous cell carcinoma which means it's not a deadly cancer, only 3% of the time. It's, a, it's an aggressive cancer that they need to take care of. So I'm booked for surgery in the beginning of June where they'll try to make sure it gets taken out. So I got that surgery on my face, and I woke up one morning with no, like, it felt like my face fell asleep, just half of my face. It, like when you sleep on your arm and pins and needles, and it was like it was painful for half an hour. And so what's that about? Good news is it probably wasn't a stroke because my doctor has seen all those things, and I'm not, when he says they're good, it means they're not blocked because <laughs> I've got heart disease all throughout my veins. But the, the uh, so he doesn't think it's that because if it was a stroke, there'd be some drooping or speech slurred, and it wasn't that. So he thinks it's more neurological. Great. So I'm, I'm looking for a neurologist. I've, I've found, I'm trying to get into a neurologist and get an MRI. And, and if you've been through this, you know, like it's the news that could be good news. It, it, you get out news that could be something else. And it just gets pushed down the line and it gets pushed down like it could be a year before I see the neurologist. So what do I do in the meantime? And what happens when I see one? What did that's like? If she finds something, that's not good news. <laughs> it's just what do you do? I was really feeling like it was the pile on Trevor Palooza for sicknesses in my body of this uh, the last couple of weeks. You know, like it's just like, what do you do? Where do you? How are you supposed to do? The um. 
if you've been there physically or in your relationship or with your finances and it just keeps on, you almost get out and then it, oh, push down. Almost get out. No, it's something more. You know what? This is what I'm talking about today. This is what we all need to know. It doesn't matter if it's COVID related or it doesn't matter if it's, it's life related. We need to know what we're doing in this. Uh, the one thing that I've learned and the, what I try to practice and what I check up on myself is, is, am I strengthening myself in the Lord? That's the only thing that gets me through. That's the only thing that, that allows me to say, okay, maybe whatever. Yet will I trust. Yet will I hope. Yet will I, he's going to finish writing this story. And I'm okay with that. What? Where does this, how to strengthen yourself in the Lord comes from? It comes from 1 Samuel 30. When David has the worst day of his life, he, um, he was supposed to be fighting with the Philistines and the Philistines didn't want him at their backs because he knew, they knew the songs about David killed the 10,000, the, Saul killed the thousand Philistines, but David killed the 10,000 and they didn't want him at their back. So they sent him and his men home and they came up to Ziglag and Ziglag was burning. And all of their family, their kids, their children were taken away. And this is what it says in 1 Samuel 36. It says, David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters. They began to talk about stoning him, but David found strength in the Lord is God. It's been quite a few years already, but I've gone through the book and looked at the number of times it said, tells us to strengthen ourselves in the Lord and tells us what to do to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. And a lot of them are things that you and I need to do personally. There's a whole list of things that we do together and that's another sermon when we can finally meet together. It's, it's a whole wonderful celebratory sermon that I got for that. Today, I've got this checkup for us. Um, what it is, it's, I call it the cope with hope tool. And the word is actually checkup. And we're going to check up on your soul to see how you're actually doing. Are you actually strengthening yourself in the Lord? Uh, and let's get on with that. Let's pray. That was a good introduction. Heavenly Father, I do want to thank you that you are God. And Lord, that you, you're going to work all things together for good. And Lord, you are writing the story that is going to bring you glory in your holy name. Amen. So the tool here, I call the Cope with Hope tool. The, the acronym is checkup. The C in checkup is choose joy. We need to choose joy. Nehemiah 8.10 said, Nehemiah uh, continued, go and celebrate with a feast of rich food, sweet drinks, and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before the Lord. Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The question I have for us, to the soul check, for us is, where is my joy? Where is my joy? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. We need to have joy in the journey, joy, joy in, the, in the process. If we don't, we need to know how to get it. So how do you choose joy? You choose his presence. Psalm 1611 says, in his presence is fullness of joy. You choose to obey his word. Jesus said, if you obey my words, my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. Uh, John 15, 19. You choose joy before you feel joyful. And I love this one in Habakkuk. I'm going to read it for you. Um, I don't have it here. I have it here. Even though it, Habakkuk 3, 17 to 18. Even though the fig tree has no blossom and there's no grapes in the vine. And even though the olive crop fails and the field lies empty and barren. Even though the flocks die in the field and the cattle barns are empty, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. Do you choose joy? 
Is that something that you want to fight for? It better be something you want to fight for because if you want to cope with hope, you need to choose joy. You, you get joy. Um, we all need peace at all times and in every situation. And you, when you have peace, you have joy. Because it's the God of all hope that fills you with joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you can overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God will give you that joy, but you need to choose to receive that joy from Him. How are you doing that today? How are you doing that this week? When was the last time you found yourself laughing out, out loud? Um, I did this morning because we... A long story. If you see the post I did about these bears up here with the masks and bringing my own audience, um, Emily was saying that. Oh, I can't even share that. That would be. <laughs> she said, "If the white bear was male, he didn't have an opinion to share anyway." Anyway, but anyway, um, uh, there was something better than that. I was laughing, but. To cope with hope, you need to choose joy. So choose joy. H in the checkup, H is you need to hear God for yourself. Psalm 119, 27 and 28 says, Cause me to understand the way of your precepts, that I may meditate on your wonderful deeds. My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. The soul check for us is, have I been making space to hear God's voice? You know, a lot of times when we are offended at God, and we get offended at God when we lose hope. We get offended at God when things don't work out the way we plan. We get offended at God when it's not this answer, uh, the answer is down here. And, and we find ourselves, I find myself, not wanting to hear from God. Because there are times I just rather sulk than actually hear, it's going to be okay. There are times I just want to have that pity party, then here, get off your butt and do what I told you to do. Get over that. Get off your butt and do what he tells you to do. How do you hear God for yourself? Three easy steps. First off, know that you're his sheep and you hear his voice. Uh, John 10, 35, Jesus says that you are his sheep, you hear his voice. And two, be still. Psalm 46, be still and know that I am God. Three, look to see what he will say. Habakkuk 2, 1 and 2. Uh, basically, give them space. Like, look, what is he saying to you? I do conversational journaling all the time. I want to hear his voice. I spend time in his presence. I want to have that joy. I, I want to know what he's saying when I get past myself. Do you hear God for yourself? Like, oh. John 6, Jesus says the Spirit. The, the, the most offendable thing you could say. He had multitudes of people following him. And, and he wanted to thin out the crowd. So he said, take my, my body is real bread. My blood is real drink. And they understood him that his body was real bread and his body was real, uh, blood was real drink. And so it says people left him. And he goes to his, turns to his disciples and he says, are you going to leave me too? That's how bad it got. Like people were leaving him so much that he turns to his disciples, are you going to leave me too? And Peter says, I think it was Peter, he says, where, where will we go? Because you have the words of life. You and I have access to the words of life by when we take the time to listen to his voice. It is life he brings. And so when we are in the middle of it, when we need to keep on hoping, when the finish line keeps moving, we need to hear his voice for ourselves. It's not good enough to hear it secondhand. You've got to get it for yourself. If you want to cope with hope, you need to hear God for yourself. The E in checkup is to engage in service. What do I mean by that? Proverbs 11.25, the generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will they themselves be refreshed. Soul check question is, have I been serving others in love? This is one that we put off because, hey, we're not supposed to be around other people. Guess what? We need to figure this out. We need to figure out how we can serve others in love. 
This is so important. I'm going to be speaking a whole message on this in the next couple of weeks. But the, there's two things I want you to think about and do. You, you need to, if you're not serving others in love, you need to change your view on what you do and change your view on what happens to you. What do I mean by that? Change your view on what you do. Little simple gestures change lives daily. What do I mean by that? Your friendliness matters. Your smile, even behind a mask, matters. Showing appreciation matters. You need to know the good things you do that you think matter nothing, it makes a difference in people's lives. So keep up with doing those small little things to make someone smile, to bring someone joy, to bring someone in a little bit more Jesus today. Those things matter. Little simple gestures change lives daily. You're the salt. You give the world some flavor. Make the world a better place for people who are with you. And the finish line keeps getting pushed ahead. Okay? The second thing, you got to change your view on what you do. What you do is important and it matters, even the little things. You need to change your view on what happens to you. And this is a big one for me. Um, I came across that God reminded me of this verse. Yeah, you know, Paul calls our troubles uh, light and momentary troubles. Light and momentary. I think we should consider everything we're going through as light and momentary. But yeah, because think about this. We get to live forever. This part of our journey is just the preface of the book that goes on forever. Light and momentary. Listen to what, what, what they produce. This is what he says in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4. 17 to 18, he says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what we see, what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Wow. Wow. You're going through the grinder? Guess what? It's light and momentary. Hard times come, guess what? They're light and momentary. You don't have that answer you think you should have, guess what? It's light and momentary. Did I tell you that? Oh, I didn't even tell you that. You got to be stop being so impressed with your problems. You get off your butt and start, serve, start to serve others in love. It's, it's something that we do when we get to get less impressed with the size of our problems and more impressed with helping others that, that makes the difference in our own lives. That was the last point, but I didn't say it, so it's a good point now. Get, get like, understand. We, yeah. Change your view on what happens to you and change your view on what you do. What you do matters. Whatever little thing you can do, whatever, it, it, it's not necessarily little to the person that you do it for. You can do things like phone calls. You can do things like text messages. You can do things like emails. You can do things like live casts. You can do things like images or you, you're, I love seeing your, your doodle stuff, your doodle art stuff that you do up. It just, it makes me smile when I see it. It makes my day better just seeing those things. It's you're doing those things. And the trick with that is, is listen to what God is saying and do it. Listen to what he's telling you to do. Some brings, someone brings, comes to your mind, give them that phone call, give them that email, give them that text. If something comes up, well, maybe I can Dave, post that. But we couldn't do your video on. Post it online. Let's see it online. We couldn't do it this morning. Um, get it out there. If you want to cope with hope, well, that is the same part. Yeah, we're talking about service. You got to engage in service. You've got. You've got to. Yeah, 
cope with hope, you need to serve others in love. Non-negotiable there, okay? So, that's a good thing. Where, what have we done? We've t- talked about choose joy, hear God for yourself, and engage in service. The next C in checkup is to uh, catch good teaching. You get that? Um, 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians 12, 19, Paul says, perhaps you think we're saying these things just to defend ourselves. No, we tell you this as Christ's servants and with God, as God is our witness. Everything we do, dear friends, is to strengthen you. We get strength from uh, hearing good teaching. Do you get strength by hearing good teaching? I can't even, see, this would be great for interaction because honestly, I got like, the four people who are up here, and that's it. And then we got two koala, a koala bear and a polar bear with face mask on. So I don't know what you're saying. Like, but put in the comments if you're listening, if you're paying attention, if you're watching on YouTube on a big screen, you really can't. But if you want to go to K-Way Live, I, I was actually texting Karen there, so you can see our little love text for Mother's Day. Um, but um, you can do that as well. You, Karen's up there. You can talk to her with the text there. Uh, teaching is to strengthen you and to encourage you towards love and good deeds. And there's all kinds of ways to get good teaching. It's the best teaching the world has ever seen is in the world right now, is, is, is now. But you got to sift through, you might need to sift through some other stuff to get to it. The, um, how do you find good teaching? We got an app for that, okay? Kway.tv. You can do, find it on our app. You can go to kway.tv, and that's video on demand. It has all our old sermons and the messages there. Our past, not old sermons, they are past broadcasts. I'm still hoping to use them on my site for a while. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> past broadcasts at kway, kway.tv. YouTube, if you don't get overwhelmed with YouTube, there's all kinds of really good teaching iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, if you do the podcast thing, there's all kinds, whatever, wherever you listen to your podcast, you can find great teaching. The tip here is you need to ask others who they're getting encouragement from. If you don't know anybody, if you don't, if this isn't something you do, ask other people who they're listening to and get encouragement from and check them out. I know I wanted to get the whole discernment series out of the way because it's really important, but hey, if you got questions, talk to somebody. Uh, we are available if you got questions about anybody. And um, so we're here, we're still here for each other. Do you create space to be strengthened in the Lord by teaching? Ask Holy Spirit who you he wants you to start listening to or how he wants you to be to uh, be encouraged through teaching if you want to cope with hope you need to catch good teaching and the k you know it's going to be here the k is you got to know how to wait and i'm reading from the book here and it doesn't quite say what i want it to say but i'll say what it should have said so anyway this is the New Living Translation I'm reading. Oh, Jacob, how can you say the Lord doesn't see your troubles? Oh, Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? Have you not heard? Have you not understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strengthens the powerless. Even youths become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Um, The the older versions say those who wait in the Lord. But this version actually translates it the way it should. Okay, those to wait means to trust. How do you wait? You need to wait with expectancy. Waiting with expectancy is to wait with trust, okay? To wait with him with expectancy is to wait for him to speak, knowing that he will answer. Jeremiah 33.3 promises us that. 
To wait with him with expectancy is to wait for his presence to be palpable. Knowing his presence is what makes the difference between us and all the other people of the world. Exodus 33, 15 to 16. And to wait with expectancy is to wait with his pleasure, knowing he rejoices over us with singing. Zephaniah 3.17. Do you know how to wait? Have you been choosing to wait? And trust and hope. We need to have peace at all times and in every situation. We, we can can we rejoice? Can we rejoice always and pray continually? Yes, with Holy Spirit's help. Yes, we can. We're all going to have to know how to wait when the finish line keeps moving. Do you? So to check up, we choose joy, hear God for yourself, engage in service, catch good teaching, know how to wait. The you is utilize praise. We sang this this morning, people already. You know this. Those who, uh, Psalm 8, 2, those who, that through the praise of children and infants, I have established a stronghold against your enemies. to Silence the foe and the avenger. The sole check for us is, have I been choosing to praise? Praise is a choice that we make. It can't be hollow and it can't be in cognitive dissonance. What is cognitive dissonance? It's when words come out of my mouth where I really can't feel them. We need to praise. At, how do we avoid cognitive dissonance? We, we praise him in response to who he is, what he has done, and what he has promised to do. We can't praise him because it's the Christian thing to do. We can't praise him because it's part of the service. We can't praise him because we want to get something out of it. We praise him because in response to who he is, what he's done, and what he's promised to do. There is a time when you got to say, bless the Lord, O my soul. But that's Psalm 103, and Psalm 103, throughout Psalm 103, it talks about who God is, what he has done, and what he has promised to do. Psalm 103 also tells us to praise him with our whole heart. And you know what it means to, pray, to do anything with your whole heart, right? It is a de- it's a decision, it's an emotion, and it's an action. How is it a decision? We decide to praise him for who he is. It's an emotion because we remind himself of what he's done. When you have those testimonies of yourself, what he has done in the past, what he's done for others in the past, it, 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 those things allow you to praise honestly and without cognitive dissonance. When, when you remind your, uh, the, the action is you do something in response to what he's promised to do. Sometimes it's a prophetic act. Sometimes I will praise him in the battle, right? Like well, we've been singing those songs. We got to do it before we feel like it sometimes. But, but uh, uh, remember who he is. Remember what he's done. And it brings it all together. We need to praise him. Why, what, is, what is one thing he's promised to do? He's promised to work all things together for good. He's promised that. He's done it in the past. He's going to do it again. He's not finished yet. I can praise him because he is God and he is able. I can praise him because I remember what he's done for me personally and what he's done for others that I've seen work in, him work in their lives. I can praise him because he will work all things together for good. And it gives me peace for myself knowing that, that God is the author of my story. And he is auth- he's, he's authored the whole thing already. Every word's written before one of them has come to be. And anything I do in this life, anything that happens to me in this life, is just the preface before the first chapter. It really is light and momentary. It really is not that big a deal in light of eternity. It's more important for me to encourage you towards love and good deeds and do love and good deeds myself than it is for me to have the answers I'd really like to have last year. If you want to cope with hope, you need to utilize praise. 
you got to do it. And the final P is you got to pray in the Spirit. We're told, 1 Corinthians 4.4, 4, a person who speaks in a tongue is strengthened personally. And the one who speaks in prophecy strengthens the entire church. Jude one twenty. but dear friends, you must build each other up in the most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. We, we, the, the tongues is the least of all the gifts because it's for the individual, not the collective body. But guess what? All of us are individuals now. <laughs> we don't have a gathered body. When we do have a gathered body, there is prophecy that's for all of us. There is signs and wonders that's for all of us to build us all up. There is um, revelation that happens that builds us all up. When we're alone, the gift is tongues that we need to be focused on. So how, if you if you got the soul check question, do you pray in tongues or do you seek to pray in tongues? Uh, praying in the Spirit. Yeah, I've already done that. How do you pray in the Spirit if you don't know how? Ask for it. Luke 11, 9, 30, uh, 9 to 13 tells us to uh, ask and keep asking, seek and keep seeking, knock and keep knocking. Because you know, God is the Father is a good Father, and He's going to give you good gifts. So He's going to give you the Holy Spirit. And the second thing is you got to step out in faith. Hebrews eleven six. It's impossible to please God without faith. So you you uh, step out in faith. Pray in tongues if you got them. Eagerly desire them if you don't. If you want to cope with hope, you need to pray in the Spirit. So how have you been doing with coping with hope? Here's the checkup. Do you choose joy? Do you hear God for yourself? Do you engage in service? Do you catch good teaching? Do you know how to wait? Do you utilize praise? And do you pray in the Spirit? That's for us today. How are we doing? Because we're not done this trip yet. We're not, we're, this road is not over. This path continues on. But it is light and momentary troubles. And God is working that out for your good, for his glory. There's a blessing. It's actually a prayer in uh, 1 Peter. Yeah, 1 Peter. That I want to leave us with today. That I, I probably could have opened up with and gone through. Because it says everything that I've just gone through. It just listen to the words of it and realize what God has in store for all of us, okay? 1 Peter 1, verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have the priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you pure and undefiled beyond the reach of any change, change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive the salvation, which is already revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must endure trials for a little while, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It's being tested as fire tests and purified school through your faith and is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong th through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day that Christ Jesus is revealed to the whole world. Verse 8, you love him even though you never have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him, and you rejoice with a glorious and an inexpressible joy. The reward for your trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do want to uh, we want to lift up to you everyone who's part of this community that that needs the encouragement to keep on keeping on. I pray for those who are feeling lonely. I pray for those who are seeking answers that have just been pushed down farther. And Lord, I pray that trust will rise up in us and encouragement and hope would be our, our just right there, God. Lord, 
we do want to pray for our leaders in every level of government and, and Holy Spirit, give them supernatural wisdom to make decisions. And Lord, we pray for an end to this virus and all its variants. Lord, we pray for you, that your name would be glorified in it and through it. We pray that through simple acts of kindness, we can show, show your light and spread your salt, Lord. I pray, Lord God, for the people that we do connect with, that their lives would be brought into your kingdom. That they would know the hope that they can have in you, the glorious hope. The, 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 Lord, they would, they would know. And Lord, that they would ask us the reason for our hope. And I thank you for that, Lord. So Lord, today, I do pray for answers for prayer as well. Because we know that hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is the tree of life. So Lord, have your way in us and through us. And help us to shine your light bright as the darkness comes in. In your name, amen.